All right, I am two classes. Today we were talking about similar triangles. Uh, similar triangles uh, was covered in IM1. It's something you should have learned about in IM1. I know we don't always remember the things that we learned uh, in the previous math class. So we are going to talk about um, similar triangles, what it means to be a similar triangle. So a similar triangle is that the corresponding angles are congruent and then the corresponding sides are proportional. So basically what we have here are two triangles, ABC and then DEF. Uh, they look the same, it's just one is bigger than the other, right? It looks like this is a mini me version of triangle ABC. And that's what the similar triangles are. They have the same angle measures, but the sides are smaller on one of the one of them. But it's it's they're just mini me versions of each other. Um, what we need to talk about is the similarity statement. All right. So what we want to do when we write um, talking about similar triangles, the similar similarity statements can be very important. Uh, we're going to be talking about triangles. This symbol means similar, right? Just the, it's like the wavy part of the congruent symbol. It means uh, they're not equal, but they're, they're you know, mini-me's. Um, what we want to do when we list out um, the versions, the, the vertices of these, um, of the triangles, we want to make sure we list them so that the vertices are in order corresponding. So you see here, a, based on the one congruency arc, is congruent to angle D. Why is it that highlighting? Oh, my board was lagging. Uh, A is congruent to D. And so when we write out this, we if we list A first, right, we would have to list D first also because those are, they correspond with each other. They are congruent. And so then if we look at the next set, uh, D, B corresponds to E because they are congruent. So if I list B next on this one, I got to list E on this one here. And then uh, left over, I'm not going to highlight. Eh, I'll highlight them. Um, so C down here corresponds to F. All right, so it's going to be C and F. So you need to list them in order so that since um, A corresponds to D, they're listed, they're both listed first, all right? Uh, you could list B first, but then you'd also have to list E first. So they need to be in the correct order. What's beneficial to this is then we can also uh, sometimes orientation, sometimes it's confusing when you're looking at the diagrams, what side corresponds to what. Uh, you can you can see it listed here. So like AB, side AB, that's listed first, is this side here, right? Would can be, um, correspond to DE, this side here. So AB listed first, DE listed first, so the side AB corresponds to DE. So the... the the similarity statement, if you remember congruency statements from IM1, very important when we're looking at similar triangles. So what we're gonna be doing um, is uh, solving for missing side lengths here, all right? So this is one of those ones where it might be difficult to determine which sides correspond to which, we'll figure it out as we go along. But this is where that, that second part of the similar triangles comes in. Corresponding sides are proportional, all right? Um, what that means is I can set up uh, ratios of sides and be proportional color. So um, how this is going to work. So I have EFG in KLM. I'm going to change this question mark to an X. I need to find the length of EG there. I'm going to set up a proportion, right? What you're going to do is set up a ratio of corresponding sides. So look at the sides that we have here. So I have EF. From E to F is 35. We look, that's listed first. EF is going to correspond to KL, right? So KL is 7. I'm going to set up a ratio. Ratios are just fractions. So it's going to be 35 over 7 is equal to. I'm going to set up a ratio from here. So I'm going to have my X over 
uh, the other side that corresponds to. So EG is first and last, so that corresponds to KM. So that's KM is 13. Based on the information that we have, that I means it's pretty simple to figure out. Um, and then we just solve from this. So you set up uh, ratios, you set up fractions, uh, one corresponding, uh, one side length over its corresponding side, and then yeah, uh, what you're trying to find here. Um, what I'm going to do is for all of these, you can reduce this fractions, 35 over seven uh, reduces to five. That's not gonna work for all of them. So uh, sometimes we might end up with fractions or decimals. So what I'm actually going to do is cross multiply. So it's gonna be seven times X which is 7x is equal to, cross multiply on the other side, 35 times 13. So 7x is equal to 35 times 13. Um, I'm not gonna do that one in my head right now. Uh, that's 455. Excuse me. Oh, man. Uh, and then the last step here is divide both sides by 7. So 455 7 is 60. So that missing side length is 65. All right. Um, one thing, uh, when you're setting up these proportions, if you start, uh, you know, this triangle on top of your ratio, all right, so since I had the 35 over the seven, I need to keep the other side length from this triangle on top. So it needs to be X over 13. If you switch it up, you won't get the right answer. So you need to make sure you're keeping the side lengths. One, it doesn't matter which one you pick, all right? But as soon as you set up your first ratio, the side lengths from one triangle on top needs to stay on top for all the, the ratios going forward. Let's do another example here. Um, so here, uh, I'm going to start a little bit different. Uh, I'm going to start with the side length, setting up a ratio of the side length that we don't know. So I'm trying to find E to L. So it's X. Uh, e to L is here. So E and L are the first and last. Uh, that corresponds to E to G. So that's going to be this side length here. So E to L corresponds to E to G. So I'm going to set my first ratio as X over 77 is equal to uh, the other two side lengths start off. I put the X on top and that's from this triangle. So the 39 needs to go on top from that triangle, 39 over 91. Right? Uh, and then solve like we did on the last one. Uh, I'm going to cross multiply. So starting off. Here, it's going to be X times 91. So that's going to be 91X is equal to uh, cross multiply over here, 77 times 39. So 77 times 39 is 3,003. So you get 91X equal to 3,003, and then divide both sides by 91. Divided by 9, comes out to 33. So yeah, X is equal to 33. All right. Um, one more here. So now we have kind of a weird, we don't have a emergency statement with this one. That's okay. Um, so I'm trying to find S to U. All right. S to U. Um, beside that SU, so actually we can see it's, there's the smaller triangle. That's like the, the left side of it compared to the full triangle. Those are similar. So S to U is X. That's going to correspond to S to L. So that's going to be X over 20 is equal to, I put the long, the, the side from the bigger triangle on top. So I'm going to have 36 over 24. 
Um, again, this would reduce. You can do that if you want, but since we're just cross multiplying and dividing, uh, I'm just going to leave it. So I'm just going to do cross multiply here, x times 24 or 24x. And then it's going to be uh, 20 times 36. Uh, so 20 times 36, 720. So you get 24. Or, um, and I believe that is, you divide both sides by 24. I believe that's going to be 30. Yeah, 30. So you get X is equal to 30. All right, so next thing we're gonna do, so it's gonna be the same type of thing, but we are going to be setting up, um, we're gonna be solving the equation, we gotta solve for x, so we get a little bit more solving here. Uh, we set up the same way, so uh, I'm gonna start with four x minus nine is gonna be the top of my first ratio. Uh, that corresponds, so qj, qj, so qj, is the first and last letter, so that's going to correspond to L and J. So that's going to be uh, L to J is 98. And that's going to be equal to, I put uh, the QJ, so I, the 25 needs to be on top over here, and that's going to be over the 70. So you set it up, um, and then we cross multiply, just like we did on the last one, and it's just going to be a little bit more solving. So it's going to be... Um, 4x minus 9 times 70, and that 4x minus 9 needs to be in parentheses because we're going to end up distributing that 70 in there. And then it's going to be 98 times 25. Ninety-eight times twenty-five. So let's do that one. Ninety-eight times twenty-five is twenty-four fifty. 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 Twenty-four fif
So from here, uh, subtract 84 from both sides. Plus A4 minus A4 cancels out. You have 36X is equal to uh, 396. And then divide both sides by 36. And this one comes out to 11 again. Wow, crazy. Two problems coming out to 11, back to back. Cool. So 11, yeah. All right, there you go. So set up the proportion. Um with uh, corresponding sides and then then solve cross multiply and solve and that's all there is to it um we'll see you guys next time when we're moving into right triangles super fun stuff right triangles